he leans close and like really quietly whispers in his ear, Peter, I can see your house from here. <laughs> Lights out was half an hour ago, guys. It's too hot to sleep, Doc. Yeah, Eleanor's ordering some fans. You just have to be patient. Great. Probably get them in December. Get some sleep. Fox, I mean, she goes off every night, right? Doesn't sleep in the ranch house, doesn't sleep in the barn. So where does she go? Maybe she sleeps in the woods, you know, like in a sleeping bag or something. Every night? No, I don't think so. I say she's got a cabin. No, we were out riding today. I didn't see any cabin. <laughs> Maybe she's got a camouflage, you know, like the bat cave. Are you lot waiting for me to sing you to sleep? Cut the chatter. Get those lights out. Maybe she's got a boat. <laughs> Well, the girls are still awake, as per usual. I'm bushed. I'm leaving. Night, Fox. Night. I hate heat waves. I said I'd get the fans, and I'll get them, okay? You're right. Probably get them in December. They're on order, Michael. I'm just as hot as you are. the throne. That is you and me, friends. Everyone stands before him. And then the sea gave up its dead. Death and the world of the dead also gave up the dead they held. And all were judged according to what they had done. And verse 15 says, whoever did not have his name written in the book of the living was thrown into this lake of fire. <coughs> in our lives is recorded. It is like a big VCR to be played back by the Almighty Himself. Our name in the book of the living. I want you all to get down on your hands and knees right now and pray with me. Lord, cleanse me. <laughs> Wash away my sins and write my name in the book of Sarah, the living. Sarah, what are you doing? Wash away my sins and write my name in the book. Sarah. I ask this because I know that I am a wretched sinner. I ask this. Grant me this, Lord, I and I will glorify thy name forever. Sarah. <laughs> Dr. Roberts. He said you were great with kids who were having problems. What kind of drugs was she taking? Amphetamines and alcohol. They pumped her stomach. 
Did you know she was taking it? No. I mean, she'd been acting strangely the last month or so. But this, it's like she's a different person now. How was she acting strangely? We're a religious family, Dr. Terry. Active in our church, especially Sarah. But lately, she's become almost fanatical. Especially at night. Praying, watching TV evangelists. And distant, uh, daydreaming, that sort of thing. But I never thought she was doing drugs. Well, I tend to agree with Dr. Roberts. I think the drugs are just a symptom of a much deeper problem. Well, I don't know what. Her father died four years ago, but she's dealt with that. I mean, why is she acting like this now? Have you asked her? Yes. But she says everything is fine. She's unraveling, and I don't know what to do about it. I just want my daughter back. Ah, uh, okay. Let's see, what else here? Uh, what's your favorite book? The Bible. The Bible. Right. Um... How would you define your relationship with your parents? Exceptional. Exceptional? <sighs> what about the future? What do you want to do with your life? Well, I'd like to help people. Preferably underprivileged children. I, what I'd really like to do is go to Africa. <sighs> I'm gonna puke. Look, this is the Miss America pageant, okay? Michael says, be yourself, tell the truth. I am telling the truth. Why do I have to answer these questions anyway? I already told you. It's part of the program. Everybody who comes here has to go through this first. Not lying, huh? You really are one of those religious freaks. Freak? I get people like you every day on the street, pushing Bibles, asking for money, telling me I'm going to hell. We're not all freaks. You even had a John once. Right after we did it, Wanted me to get down on my knees and pray for forgiveness with them. <laughs> yeah, sure, buddy. Lead us not into temptation, right? Serious head case. You're a prostitute? Got a problem with that? No. Good. That was the best dinner we've had in a long time. Mucho gracias, senorita. Where did you learn how to cook like that? My father taught me. What is he, a chef or something? No, he was a doctor. Cooking was his hobby. <clears throat> was? What, he like die or something? <laughs> yes, he did. Mm. Oh, I'll take tea. that. No, that's okay. Carrie can take her on. I don't mind. Hang on. <laughs> Sarah, why don't you sit down? You haven't even touched yours. Yeah. Really, I'm fine. Come on, sit down. Oh. Hey, Excuse what about me. dessert? Dessert? Really? I made a pie. Excellent. Yeah. Here, no way, you always do the frame first. Get down here, Milo. Michael said we gotta work on this together. Yeah, increases our patience and problem solving skills, remember? Wow, now there's a nice piece right there. Just talking about the puzzle. You know, the way the pieces all fit together. One inside the other. Get a life. I thought you'd like it when guys talk to you like that. Only if they pay up front first. The sun descending in the west. The evening star does shine. The birds are silent in their nest. And I must seek for mine. <laughs> what the hell does that mean? It means it's night night time. Oh, it's not even 10 o'clock already. I beg to differ. Milo. Come on. Sarah, come on. Ten o'clock, lights out. I'm not sleepy. Sorry, those are the rules. Couldn't I, couldn't I just read a book, you know, before I... Do you want to talk to Michael? No, I'm just not sleepy, okay? It's all right. 
I understand. No, you don't. I'm not tired. Why should I have to go to bed when I'm not even sleepy? You can leave the light on if you want. It's not the light. Why are you making such a big deal about this? What's wrong? Nothing. Talk to me. I'm not tired. Lights out at 10 o'clock. If you want to read, you can do it here in bed. I just don't want you wandering around the ranch in the dark. You are weird. Well, maybe she's just homesick and first night away, that sort of thing. She's a really nice girl, too. I can't believe she's a drug addict. Then again, I guess the question is, why does she need the drugs in the first place, right? Yeah. It's probably some kind of an escape. An escape from what? Oh, I know. Okay, gee, that's why she's here. I gotta stop trying to do your job and trying to do my job at the same time. I mean, it's really affecting my work here. Nightmare, she totally freaked, scared the hell out of me. Sarah? Hey, Sarah, what's wrong? Huh? What is it? You can tell me. Sarah? Are you okay with this? I think your blue tie sets off your eyes much better. I mean, me going into town. Oh, that. Yeah, I'll, Sunday I'll just take the kids up to the waterfall for a swim. Okay, good. We should be back by oh, early afternoon. 
Where are you going? Church. Sarah asked me to take her into town to her church. Give, give me a chance to talk to her mother. You should come. To church? Mm, I don't think so. Why not? It's the holy water. Burns. You may really like what you hear. Then again, I might not. Give it a chance. Look, I don't need to be told I'm a sinner. That's the reason I'm in this place, okay? Ready? Anybody else want to go? Been there. Hated it. Where are you going? Church. Wonderful mass, Father Gaines. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, could we talk for a minute? Sure. Sarah? May I join you? Actually, she has woken up screaming a few nights, but she's settled down fairly quickly. Does she talk about it at all? <sighs> no, she won't tell me anything. I have a feeling this nightmare is a recurring one. How can you tell that? Well, she was very frightened about going to bed last night, which means she knew it was coming. And would explain the alcohol and drug use. Amphetamines keep her awake. Alcohol disrupts her sleep patterns. So this dream, this is what's causing all the trouble? Well, what's in the dream is causing the trouble. How close was she to her father? Very close. She absolutely worshipped him. You think there's something in the dream about him? It was four years ago. Well, the stress of losing someone very close to you never goes away. And sometimes you think it has, then it comes back and hits you. And until I get her to open up, that's all I've got to go on. Hello, Mrs. Trent. Hello, Sister Catherine. said dreams are the touchstones of our character. You hang around Vic too long. And keeping that in mind, I have an exercise for all of us. I want you all to make a special effort to try and remember your dreams tonight. And write them down as soon as you wake up. Otherwise, you'll forget them. Okay? And we'll discuss them in group tomorrow. What if it's uh, an X-rated dream? Write it down. With pictures. <laughs> Started already? I'm sorry I'm late. It's a long ride from the ranch. I've made my projection for the new quarter, and I'm sure you'll find it very interesting. And with our added income from the new foreign market, I'm sure we'll be able to expand our base. And well, if you take a look at your cost reports, just just, just look at them. And
huge lobster comes out of the water and chases me up on the beach. You'll all get your turn. Go on. Well, the next thing I know, I'm at my old house on Ross Avenue, and this lobster's outside, right? And it's trying to get in, so I lock the doors, but it smashes all the windows. And that's when I woke up. I hate crustacean dreams. <laughs> okay, who's next? Sarah, how about you? I didn't have any dreams. None at all? Can't have any dreams if you don't go to sleep. <laughs> Is that right? You didn't get any sleep last night? How do you expect to go through the day without any sleep? You've got chores to do. I'll do them. Okay, so you didn't dream last night. How about the night before? You want to talk about that one? What happened in that dream? Have you ever had it before? Who was in the dream? Anybody that you know? I told you I didn't have any dreams. I don't know how long you can go on like this. Until you talk about it, it's not going to go away. Lake of fire. Yeah, it's from the Bible, I think. Yeah, Revelations. The lake of fire is where all the sinners will be cast at the end of time. Two years parochial school. Huh. I don't want to do it for a bit. She thinks she's going to be punished. Yeah, but for what? I don't know. I guess she figures she's committed a sin. I better go talk to her mother again. Well, well wait, what about Sarah? Now, Vic's taking the kids on a ride. Make sure she goes with them. Yeah, but she's in no mood to go for a ride. She doesn't even want to leave the house. Well, she can't hide in here all day. Fresh air will be good for her. I'll be back as soon as I can. Okay. She needs an exorcist. I don't think her nightmares are connected to her father's death. Why do you think that? Well, what I've got so far is that she thinks that someone or something in her nightmares is going to take her to the lake of fire. Lake of fire? Why? Maybe she's done something wrong. Something that she thinks she's going to be punished for. I don't know what that could be. What about her friends? Maybe they know something. Well, she doesn't have many friends outside of the church. That's where she spends most of her time. Sister Catherine and Father Doran are probably closest to her. They're young. Very energetic, like Sarah. Sister Catherine, is she the nun that was talking to her in the church? That's right. They work together a lot. Food drives, fundraisers, that sort of thing. Hmm. She loves that photo. That's how she likes to remember him. Nice. Wonderful girl. 
one of our most faithful parishioners. And a close friend. And a close friend. Do you know if anything's happened to her lately, within the last month or so, that, that might have been traumatic for her? No. I know she's been having nightmares, her mother told me. I have no idea what might be causing them. What about Father Doran? Her mother said they're good friends, too. Is he around? No, no. He left the parish a few weeks ago. Why'd he leave? I don't know. And he didn't tell you? No. I'm sorry. I'm late for Vespers. Give me a break, Milo. Nah, really. Like, after he pays you and takes you up to his hotel room or wherever, what if he asks if he can videotape it? Is that extra? What if it's a real ugly guy? Forget him, Milo. You don't have that kind of money. <laughs> no, nah, dude's got a point. I mean, how can you do it with someone who makes you want to puke? Look, as long as she gets paid, she'll take on anything. Right, Peggy G? Leave her alone. Hey, don't have to cop it to you, man. Just having some fun. What'd you do to get sent here? He got caught dealing drugs at his school. What about you? I, I, uh, I stole some things. He's a klepto. And you? I tried to burn down my high school. Great. Clean up your own act first, and then you can make fun of her, okay? I can take care of myself, you know. Look, you're not going to convert me if that's what you're trying to do. I'm not. I just wanted to show you. Show me what? God would rather forgive than condemn. You really believe that? I have to. We all have to. He loves us. Well, then why do people suffer? Why is the world so screwed up? He tests us, our faith, to make sure we're worthy. But he really does love us. I'd like to believe that. I really would. Well, I better get back to the bunkhouse. Talk to you later. Talk to your mother today. Then I went to your church and talked to Sister Catherine. She's very worried about you. I wanted to talk to Father Doran. But they said he left the parish. Do you know why? Leave me alone. Tell me. Leave me alone. No. I'm going to find out what happened. Either you are going to tell me or I'll find out on my own. But either way, you will talk about it. Dr. Terry. What happened between them? Sarah and Father Doran, something happened, and if you know, I, tell me. I don't know anything. If she confessed to you. I don't hear confession. As a friend, I mean. Look, I don't know if you know what's going on, or, or maybe Sarah confessed her sins to you, and you're honoring that privacy. I told you I don't hear confessions. But the fact is, I've got a very sick young girl at my ranch who's resorted to using drugs and alcohol to keep from sleeping. She's weak. She's confused. She's on the verge of a complete emotional breakdown. Now, whatever is troubling her, keeping it a secret is only making matters worse. If you know something, tell me now, for her sake. Dr. Terry? They were best of friends. Very close. I, I guess there was always a... deeper attraction there. Something stronger than both of them. They haven't spoken since. Father Doran joined the Trappists. His guilt overwhelmed him. He hasn't spoken to anyone. And Sarah developed nightmares. She made me promise not to tell anyone. She was hoping to put it all behind her. 
But I know Sarah. And I know what it's doing to her. And I don't want to see her suffer. Yeah. Thanks. One piece missing. I think they ship them out that way. Sarah, I want you to come with me. Where? To see Father Doran. Sister Catherine told me where he is. I think you should talk to him. No, I can't. You have to. You can't keep hiding from what happened. You both need to talk about it. You want the nightmares to stop? I know it's tough, but it's necessary. It's the first step. Go on. It's okay. We pray for her every day. God has forgiven her, just as he has Father Dora. like a log. So that's all she needed was forgiveness? Well, Father Doran is God's representative. She needed to hear it from him. <sighs> well, you look exhausted. Hmm. She gets some sleep. Well, good night. Soggy, Sarah. Keep on stirring. Michael. Just keep it going. Don't burn it. Look, I know this is hard, but something's got to be done. Don't burn it. I think you should call Rachel tomorrow and have her come pick Sarah up. Not yet. It's okay. We all want what's best for her, but she's getting worse. She should be admitted to a hospital for psychiatric testing. Sarah needs to be forgiven. I thought Father Doran was the key. I thought he'd at least set her on the right path. This is going way beyond the ranch's limits. You have no idea what the ranch's limits are. It's affecting everyone here. I'm not going to give up on her. She's already given up on herself. Here.
Thanks, Mrs. Trent. I appreciate it. I'll let you know how it goes. Bye. Did I hear you right? You're actually going to try and hypnotize Sarah? Well, when it comes right down to it, the only person that's going to forgive Sarah is herself. She's got to confront her nightmare. But don't you have to want to be hypnotized in order for it to work? I just hope she trusts me enough to allow it. Well, come on, Michael. You're asking her to voluntarily go back into her nightmare. She's got to go in. It's the only chance she's got of getting out. No. Listen to me, Sarah. You won't be alone. I'll be with you the whole time. No, I... I can't. I'm so scared. I know you are. But sometimes the things that scare us when we take a closer look at them turn out to be not that scary after all. I've prayed, but he doesn't listen. He's listening. And he wants to help you. But you've got to let him. You've got to show him that you're strong enough to stop running. Test. I'll be right here the whole time. Can you look at me, Sarah? You can trust me, right? Okay. I want you to listen to my voice. And you're looking at me. And you're moving around, trying to get comfortable. And as you do, I want you to listen to the sounds in the room. My voice, the waves, your breathing. And now your thoughts. With each breath you take, you drop deeper into the trance. Breathing in so much comfort and breathing out all the worry and fear. Breathe in the comfort and breathe out the fear. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to recall a dream. I don't know which dream your subconscious will select. It might be the dream that's causing you so much pain. As you do, you will know that you are strong. And when it's over, you will be stronger. Now, begin your dream. Where are you? to let him he's not angry with you he loves you he loves me you don't have to be afraid of him you never did
you're asleep, finally. Sarah, too? You mean the hypnosis worked? I think so. I hope so. It's up to her now. Night. Night. Thank you.